Flying in Canada has always been very expensive. So in this video, I'm going to answer the questions, is it worth it to fly budget? And who is Canada's best low cost carrier? Is it Flair or Swoop? Welcome back to the Financial Freedom System YouTube channel where I help you upgrade your mindset, money and more so you can live a life full of financial freedom and purpose. Today's my first time flying a low cost carrier and I'm pretty excited about it, but I'm also a little bit nervous. So a budget airline gives you the basics of your seat. You get to take one personal item, you get your seat, and if you want to upgrade into anything else, you're going to have to pay extra. So you want to carry on, you want checked bags, you want food, you want a seat upgrade, it's going to cost you. So for this trip, I'll be flying from Halifax to Toronto with Flair Airlines. I'll be doing some stuff in Toronto for the day and then coming back tomorrow to Halifax, but this time from Hamilton on Swoop. That is if everything goes as planned because the reviews for these companies are pretty scary. Flair Airlines has a 2.5 star rating on TripAdvisor and the last two reviews say terrible service and process, wish there was a zero rating and never recommending again. Swoop also has a 2.5 star rating on TripAdvisor and their reviews say horrible, never book and one star too generous and yes, that person gave them one star. So I don't know what this weekend has in store for me. This is how I'm going to rate my flights. If the experience is anything between bad and the worst flight of my life, they fail and it's somewhere between a zero and a five. If the flights go smooth and I get to my destination, well, that's good enough for me and it's a six. A seven means it was a solid flight and there was nothing to point out. A great leg deserves an eight. An exceptional journey deserves a nine. And the most incredible and untouchable flight deserves there's full marks, a 10 out of 10, so it's going to be pretty tough to get a good rating. Looking at that scale, I just hope both flights are at least a six or above. I booked my tickets two weeks before my trip using the flyflare.com and flyswoop.com websites. My goal was to fly both of these airlines on the same weekend, and I tried initially flying out of the closest airport to me, but that couldn't happen because Flair currently doesn't fly out of Moncton. For this challenge, I chose to book the cheapest fares possible to test actually how a budget airline really works, and this meant I had a seat on the plane and could bring a personal item with me like a small backpack, and that's it. It had to go under the seat in front of me, and if I put it in the overhead bin, I guess I'd be charged for that, so I wasn't going to let that happen, and the only thing I paid extra for was actually to select the same seat on both flights. That way I'd be able to do an accurate comparison for this video. I paid $86.25 for my flight on Flair and $58.94 for my flight on Swoop. And that means the entire trip cost $145.19, which is a huge saving compared to the same flight on the same days would cost $472 with another carrier. And I've gotta be honest, when I booked my tickets, I really wasn't expecting much, but I had three main things I wanted out of these flights. The first thing was I wanted it to be cheap. I've flown a lot in my life, but I've also said no to a lot of trips because flying in Canada can be very expensive. And since I saved more than $300 on this ticket, this goal has been accomplished before I even left. The second thing I wanted was for the flights to be relatively on time. And I say relatively because these tickets were so cheap that I was fine with a 30 to 60 minute delay, but nothing major. And the third thing I wanted was for an overall good experience. So I'm gonna show you how that went now. I started the weekend by checking into my first flight using the Flare website the night before. Once I got an email, and this process is pretty simple. When watching other reviews though, it seemed like a lot of people had issues with the online check-in, but mine went smoothly, and that meant I didn't have to pay an airport check-in fee of $25, which is pretty common on many low-cost carriers. I packed more gear into the tiny backpack than I thought was actually possible, and hit the road to Halifax early the next morning. Walking into the airport, the flare counters are right in front of you, and their green logo stands out and makes it obvious where you're supposed to check in. That's if you need to. Since I had already done that, I checked to see if my flight was on time and did some plane spotting. You can see the flight from Toronto coming in here, which was the actual plane that we took back. According to the research I did, both of my flights this trip were on Boeing 737 MAX 8s, which seat 189 passengers, and are considered fuel efficient airplanes, and budget airlines seem to prefer this model because it saves them a lot of money too. 
they announced that boarding was going to start. And when they did this by zone, it was organized and got us on the plane, I'd say pretty quickly. The first flight attendant had her head down and looked like she was doing checks or inventory of some kind. So there was no greeting, but the stewardess halfway down the cabin made up for it. My first impression was that flight attendants on budget airlines have more responsibilities than normal, and she was probably doing something that was important to us leaving on time. So I wasn't too worried about it, but I always appreciate a friendly greeting when I'm walking onto a plane. It was a full flight, which could have been because the Thursday route was canceled or because it was a weekend and the flight took off about 30 minutes after we were scheduled to. It was a beautiful day to fly and it all went smoothly. I chose economy seat 29F so I could film out the window and I found the seat surprisingly decent. You can see the leg room I had here, but I'm six foot five, so I often make things look small. My legs were comfortable, I had just enough leg room and I didn't get antsy at all throughout the trip. Normally I upgrade my seat to get a little bit more space, but today we were flying budget. If I fly with Flair again though, I'll definitely test out their seat with extra legroom. The seat itself was firm and didn't recline. Since I'm tall, my head was way above the headrest, but you probably won't have that same issue that I did. And there was a safety card in the pocket in front of me. I didn't see any plugins and the tray seemed lightweight, but it did what you needed it to do. Flair offers some basic food and drink options. After we were in the air, they announced that you could go to the back of the plane and get something, which I had never personally seen an airline do before, but they eventually came to our row and I ordered a ginger ale. The flight attendant manually entered my Amex card, which I feel would make it more efficient for the crew to have that tap ability, but I had my drink and enjoyed talking to my seatmates. Although there are no entertainment consoles on the backs of the seats, Flair has an in-flight app which you can download and to be honest, it was decent. It had a limited selection of movies you can watch, books to read, games to play, and you can even order food from the app. Even though I would rarely use that, I was impressed that they offered this and I'm sure that it will get better with time. There were three washrooms on the plane and they were clean, so that's a positive, even though plane washrooms never seem big enough as you can see here. Since this was my first flight with Flair, I wanted to get a sense of how reputable it was. So I asked my seatmate what his experience had been since he's flown with them a lot. He said he's never had an issue and he loves flying Flair every time because it saves him a lot of money. We ended up landing in Toronto 30 minutes behind schedule, but considering I only paid $86.25 for this flight, I was happy. Getting off the plane, I headed downtown using the UP Express to do some sightseeing and walked around the city. Later that night, I went to Hamilton so I could catch the return flight home on Swoop Airlines. All right, now I've checked into my hotel and we've got to talk about what I liked, what I didn't like, and ultimately my rating for the first airline, Flair. So thinking back to the expectations that I had for this trip, the first thing was it on time? And we were 30 minutes behind schedule, but listen, looking at what I paid for these flights, I'm perfectly okay with 30 minutes. I liked, I mean, I loved the fact that it got me from point A to point B for super cheap prices. This is almost something I could do every weekend if I wanted to. Another thing that stood out for me is that we flew into a major airport downtown in a city, which is pretty significant because I find that a lot of more low cost carriers are flying into more regional airports that are typically outside a major center. Two things I didn't like is I didn't like the fact that the flight was packed, but that's to be expected when you're flying to a major hub like Toronto. And then another thing is I just found that some of the passengers were on edge. The people that I sat with were awesome. We had some great conversation, but the people around us really had their expectations really high. And in the end, I think the overall score for the first flight on Flair Airlines is a six out of 10. And for me, that's good enough. It passes. I really enjoyed my experience, especially looking at what I paid for that ticket. And just like it says on the TV in front of me, good evening, Matthew, it's time to relax. I need to get some sleep because I've got an early flight tomorrow. All right, so it's 5 a.m. in the morning and I'm pretty tired, but I'm heading to the airport now for my flight home on Swoop. Checking in for the second flight was also really easy. 
I had no issues downloading my boarding pass, but I couldn't figure out how to add the pass to my Apple wallet. And that was something I was able to do with Flare, which made it really easy and convenient when I was moving through the airport and I needed it. So this would be a nice feature to see added, but according to the Swoop website, it says you can do this. I just couldn't figure it out. Because Swoop flies out of a smaller airport, they seem to be the main carrier. And that was really obvious when I walked through the doors and the check-in counters were right in front of me. I headed to security and was surprised at how long the line was. Someone told me they had never seen it so busy, but there were also multiple Swoop flights leaving at the same time, so that made sense. It took about 30 minutes to make it through and it was super easy finding my gate. The waiting area though seemed crowded and when they called for boarding it seemed like everyone just got up and they didn't care about what zone they were in and moved forward. The lines inside moved fast but that wasn't happening outside and we actually had to wait on the tarmac in minus one degrees for five minutes or so while people were heading onto the plane but the staff were apologetic about it and to be honest this is just a part of flying in Canada during the winter when you don't have a covered jetway like I did on the first flight. Getting on the plane the flight attendants were very friendly and they seemed to have fun doing their jobs even cracking a few jokes throughout the flight. We pushed back and had to wait for 25 minutes for de-icing but while we were waiting I noticed how calming the cabin seemed to be with the blue interior lights. I thought this feature stood out and eventually we took off. The flight was almost full but there was no no one sitting in the seat beside me this time so that meant that I could stretch my legs out a little bit more and I definitely needed it. I know both of the planes I was on were supposedly the same model but I found swoop seats had less legroom and about 30 minutes into the flight my legs started to hurt. The seat itself was mostly clean, it seemed to be comfier than the flare seat and I could recline it and also sort of use the headrest. The flight crew didn't waste any time coming around to see if you wanted anything to eat or drink. They accepted all major credit cards and were able to tap for payment, which made things move along efficiently. One thing I noticed was that Swoop didn't have any in-flight entertainment. And when I did some research, I discovered that they did get rid of their app a while ago, but I'm not sure if that was for entertainment, check-in, or managing your flights, but it would be nice to see something like that developed to add to the in-flight experience. The washroom seemed to be a little bit shorter than on flares, or maybe I grew overnight, I don't know, but it had everything you needed. And even though we left later than we were supposed to, I was actually surprised to see that we landed in Halifax facts right on schedule. And when I asked my seatmate about her experience flying with Swoop, she said that she's flown with them many times, that she's never had a problem as well. All right, so I just landed in Halifax, coming back from Hamilton on Swoop. And let's go through some reflection questions. Number one, was it on time? Even though we had to de-ice the plane and we left a little bit late, flying out here took very quick and uh, we were on schedule, so that's a bonus. What I liked about Swoop was they had really clean and professional looking branding, everything from the seats to the logos. Also at the end of the flight, they said, we'll see you again, Swooper, soon. Thought that was clever. And ultimately the fact that it got me from point A to point B, cheap. Some things that I didn't like is, well, we started our flight off with 10 or 15 minutes of turbulence, but we were flying through a snowstorm, so that's going to happen when you fly. I don't count that against Swoop. So the two real things would be the fact that there's no option for in-flight entertainment, and a big choice when I fly is the fact that I flew out of Hamilton, which is a smaller, more regional airport. It meant that I had to go from Toronto to Hamilton, which is about an hour um, yesterday to catch my flight. But overall, it was a really good experience. So my score for Swoop Airlines is a six out of 10. It was good enough. After reading the reviews online and asking two people on two different flights on two different airlines, I was getting totally different feedback. So I'm wondering if the reason you see both Flare and Swoop rated so low is because the majority of people who are reviewing them, who are writing those reviews are frustrated or maybe they had a bad experience and they want to take out their anger by writing a strongly worded review like a true Canadian would. But none of that really matters because I enjoyed both of the flights on this trip. I might have been pretty tough ranking both airlines a six out of 10, even though I had good flights, but I've got this scale so that I can continue to rank airlines as I travel and have more fun making videos like this. So it's time to answer the two questions I started this video out with. So the first question was, after this experience, would I fly budget again? And I can honestly say, I'm looking forward to my next trip. And the second question was, who is Canada's best low cost carrier? And honestly, 
I think they're tied. I gave both of them a six out of 10. They were both good enough experiences that I'm looking forward to my next one. I think that both of them were super affordable and uh, I had a blast. But I want to know what you think. Have you flown Flare? Have you flown Swoop? How have your experiences with them been? Let me know in the comments below. I had a lot of fun making this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button. Drop your questions and comments down below and click the subscribe button if you want to learn more about how you can live a life full of financial freedom.